good morning, everyone, and welcome to Emmanuel Church on this Pentecost Sunday. We are thrilled you're here for our last Zoom worship. Um, we particularly welcome our visitors and seekers. We are delighted that you are with us. And now let us be in worship. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. 
And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. At this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it? that we hear each of us in our own language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Crete, visitors from Rome, both Jews and pro proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Kadasi Natkalil, Mamsamana Yavar Melum, in Avie Wutruin, Apurdu, Ungal Kumararum, Ungal Kumar Tigalum, Tirka Darsanam Suluargal, Ungal Walibur, Darisanangalai Adai Wargal, Ungal Mooper, Sopanangalai Khan Bargal. Yenudia Wurya Kar Melum, Yenudia Wudya Karigal Melum, and Nakalil in Avi Wutruin, Apurdu Avargal Tirkadarsanum Solvargal. At Sistara Amo Omo Odomi Okoni, At Sistara Amo Omo Odomi Ubiri, Leo Mutsu, Nino Emumi Jadi, Leo Jomani, Mosima Sotele. Nami nitatoa ajabu katika mbingu juu na ishara katika nchi chini damu na moto na mvuke wa moshi El sol se convertirá en tinieblas y la luna en sangre antes que venga el día del Señor grande y manifiesto y todo aquel que invocar el nombre del Señor será salvo the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh no. Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> A reading from Romans. 
we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
John 15 verses 26 to 27, 16, 4b to 15. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father. He will testify on my behalf. You also ought to testify because you've been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I do not go away. The advocate not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because they do not believe in me about righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you will see, see me no longer about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of the truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It's been 50 days since the women found Jesus's tomb empty. It's also 50 days since the celebration of Passover, so it's the day of Pentecost for Jews. Although originally a harvest festival, by the time of Jesus, Pentecost is a commemoration of God giving the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. Jews from all over the world, from Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Asia, Egypt, Libya, Rome, are gathering in Jerusalem for this Jewish celebration of Pentecost. Jesus' disciples are sitting, gathered together, when suddenly the entire house fills with the sound of roaring wind. Then tongues of fire rest upon the heads, and each disciple begins to speak in a foreign language. The noise of all these disciples speaking in different languages draws a crowd. The crowd, amazed and astonished to hear their native tongue, wonders, what does this mean? And some among the multitude dismiss the disciples' speech as nothing more than the babbling of drunkards. Peter addresses the crowd, telling them the love of God through Jesus Christ. And at the end of Peter's speech, 3,000 people are baptized and were told, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Those of us raised in the church think of Pentecost as a specifically Christian observance, of course. Pentecost, we're told, celebrates the birth of the church. 
The Holy Spirit, with a mighty wind and tongues of fire, enabled the disciples to preach the message of Jesus to every tribe and language and people and nation, and that message was carried throughout the world by those who heard it. Thus, the Church of Jesus Christ was born. So what did happen on that day of Pentecost two millennia ago? And what difference does it make to us today? First, let me ask, do you have difficulty imagining Peter speaking in such a persuasive and inspiring way about Jesus that he converts 3,000 hearts? I know I do, particularly if his speech relies on the passage from Joel we heard in various languages this morning. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood hardly cheery or hopeful words. And what about the other disciples, simple fishermen and business folk who miraculously have the ability to speak fluently in languages they've never learned? What if it wasn't what Peter said that converted the 3,000? What if the crowd didn't understand the words the disciples were speaking? What if, instead, it was simply and powerfully the Holy Spirit at work in people's hearts? Have you ever known anyone to be converted, to be changed from unbelieving to believing because of words? I'm sure it happens, but I've never known anyone for which a speech made the difference between belief and unbelief. Conversion occurs at a level much deeper than words, underneath words, beyond words. Feeling the power of God's love for us in Christ is the work of the Holy Spirit, blowing and burning in us. It wasn't Peter's or the disciples' speeches that created the church that day 2,000 years ago. It was the Holy Spirit quickening people's hearts, blowing and flaming beneath the words. Now, the Holy Spirit, as we say in the Nicene Creed, is the giver of life. The Holy Spirit speaks through the prophets. The Holy Spirit informed and guided faithful people for countless millennia before the day of Pentecost described in the book of Acts. But that day of Pentecost is the Christian church's big bang. On that particular day, the Holy Spirit was fierce, ablaze with the glory of God and the love of Jesus Christ. And the disciples, and then 3,000 souls, caught fire, spreading the message of Jesus's saving love like wildfire. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit wants us to do to catch us on fire with the love of Jesus Christ. Are we willing to let the Holy Spirit ignite our souls with the good news of Jesus? Think carefully before answering yes. There are no guarantees with the Holy Spirit. As Jesus says in the Gospel of John, the wind blows where it chooses. You do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. One thing we can say for certain about the Holy Spirit, it is unpredictable. My mother was very deaf by the time she died. In fact, I was the only person she could hear. Something about the timbre and volume of my voice penetrated when no one else could. My mom and I attended church together every Sunday even though she couldn't hear a word of the musical notes of the service. As I suspect it was for the foreigners that Pentecost day in Jerusalem, she didn't hear what was being said, but it didn't matter. My mother didn't need to hear the words because she was listening to the Holy Spirit blowing and blazing underneath. Worship for her wasn't about the word, it was about the world beneath the word. 
the Holy Spirit was present in the people gathered, in the bread broken, and in the wine shared. Many years ago, I traveled to Europe and visited Paris. The only words of French I knew then or now are please and thank you. My experience may be very unusual, but it was not pleasant for me knowing no French in Paris. Waiters, railway ticket sellers, and cab drivers seemed particularly annoyed by my ignorance of their language. On a day filled with rude encounters, I sat on a park bench longing for a pleasant conversation in English. I watched as a plump matronly woman dressed in clean but well-worn clothing made her way out of a nearby church and across the plaza. My heart sank as I realized she was walking directly toward my park bench. Clearly, she planned on sitting next to me. I had waited too long to escape. We'd made eye contact. She said something incomprehensible in French. I steeled myself and answered, I don't speak French, expecting the upturned nose accompanied by a deep sniff or a look of disdain that would wither the hardiest of souls. Instead, she settled herself next to me with a satisfied sigh. This French woman smiled at me. She reached in her voluminous bag and pulled out a bag of breadcrumbs. She began feeding the pigeons, talking with me as she tossed the crumbs to the gathering birds. She gently grabbed my hand, pouring some crumbs in it, all the while chatting amiably. After we'd fed the birds, she reached in her bag and pulled out a small wallet of photos. She showed me pictures of a young woman embracing a young man. Later pictures showed the two of them with a small boy. But as the pictures continued, the boy looked less healthy. The final picture showed him stick thin with a bald head. As she showed me the photos, the woman talked about these loved ones. Her hand caressed the photo of the little boy. She wiped her eyes with the tissue. After a moment, she reached again in her bag and pulled out an apple and a knife. We sat in companionable silence, sharing slices of fruit. I didn't understand a word she said. I didn't know what she was saying to me. I understood every word she said. I knew exactly what she was saying to me. Because we were communicating at a level way beyond words. We shared the gift of our humanity. We found common and sacred ground thanks to the presence of the Holy Spirit within and between us. And so Holy Spirit blow through us, kindle in us the fire of your love. Enable us to see and know you at work in the world through the unseen and the unknown. Give us hearts to hear you as you speak without language, beyond words. Help us to look in the eyes of the stranger and see Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For our all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Dion, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, Sally Weaver, Beth Schindel, Ben Mullenkamp, B.J. Kemp, Barb Russell, Larry Martin, Donna Erickson, Mary Jane Schnitker, Ben Wagnon, Virginia Benson, Mary Roberts, and Sandy Baker. For the victims of hunger, for the victims of gun violence, and for the people of India overwhelmed with COVID infections and death, for the Congregation of Faith Christian Church of India, and their loved ones who have died or are in danger from COVID and those we now name in our hearts. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died and for those we remember in our hearts that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon me. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, 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 Peace,
Well, again, welcome. We're so glad everyone is here on this gorgeous Pentecost Sunday. I want to remind you all that there will be drive-through communion. Clive Sampson will be offering that uh, in the driveway at Emmanuel from 1130 to 1230. Um, you're also invited to bring a chair and bring something to eat and hang out on the lawn and enjoy one another's company um, and this glorious day. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., our bishop, Bishop Dion, is holding a town hall with Emmanuel. It'll be via Zoom, of course, so please put that on your calendar and plan on joining us. And beginning tonight, Compline this week, will be in various languages. And we need to thank Anne-Marie Ruhlin for making that happen and for the people who are speaking the various languages for participating. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss that 7.30 during this coming week. A week from today, we will be back to in-person worship at Emmanuel. We will have one service on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Um, the Diocese has not issued new COVID guidelines for our reopening. Therefore, we will still be wearing masks. Everyone will be asked to wear, please wear masks. Um, we will social distance. There will be some uh, COVID protocols still in place. Um, and I know you will all willingly comply, even if you're vaccinated. We don't want to have two groups of people those who wear masks and those who don't. So we've asked everyone to please wear masks. And I believe that's it for my announcements. I'll turn it back over to Clyde. Um, yes, uh, um, we are going to pray for a wish and pray for all those who are celebrating their uh, birthdays. So we welcome you, uh, invite you to put the names that we could uh, say happy birthday and also uh, remember them in our prayers. Um, I see Dale Penrose's uh, grandson, Stephen William, um, is celebrating his 10th uh, birthday on uh, Thursday, indeed one decade old. Happy birthday, Stephen William. And of course, we are so thankful for the dance, Jerusalem dance, everyone who participated. Uh, Alison Williams, um, mom, Pam, um, celebrated yesterday her 74th birthday. Praise God and happy birthday, dear mom. And Dolan, Dolan Nimi, daughter, Fallen, Fallen Kimmy's birthday on Saturday, happy birthday. Jane Emerson, um, little brother Paul, celebrating the birthday, happy birthday, little brother Paul. Okay, I don't see uh, uh, any more uh, names. Uh, so we uh, praise God for uh, all those having wonderful, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, day and uh, celebrating the birthdays. Um, Pat Wills' birthday is today. Happy birthday, Pat Wills. So we say happy birthday to all those who are celebrating their happy birthdays and a, a wonderful time or celebration that you have. Uh, God may continue to provide his present. Mark Ludwig's birthday was this week. Happy birthday, Mark Ludwig's. Okay, happy birthday, everyone. And uh, whatever celebration or joy you have, uh, God may continue to do so. Let's uh, pray for... Uh, everyone. Watch over your children, O Lord, as the days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in the hearts, may your peace which surpasses understanding 
abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to turn it over to Katie Gregson. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to take a moment to thank our children and youth volunteers. We have an amazing group of leaders at Emmanuel who helped keep our programs for kids afloat during this pandemic. Um, it's been an incredibly difficult year for everyone, including our kids. And knowing that they had a group of adults at Emmanuel who cared about them and who were committed to them, that made their tough year a lot, lot better. So uh, on behalf of my own kiddos and all the kids at Emmanuel, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. If you're able, please be sure to stop by the Pentecost Spirit Day. We have a small token of our appreciation. So thank you very much.
Thank you to all the teachers of Emmanuel. On behalf of the music department, I would like to give a special shout out to Lauren Romano for all the work that she has done with the children's choir. If you ask any musician, he or she will tell you that trying to do music over Zoom, let, her, let alone singing over Zoom, is just plain hard and difficult. Yet Lauren has met with the kids over Zoom every Wednesday night and brought smiles and encouraging presence to the kids during this difficult time. And for the congregation, it has been a great joy to see up close recordings of the kids' Zoom choir. Lauren, we Thank you deeply for all that you've done and are grateful to present you with gifts, which you and I prearranged for you to pick up in Reka Hall earlier this week. And Lauren is showing uh, the presents, uh, the gifts um, she has in her living room. Lauren, thank you. And now our service continues with the Reverend Dr. Clive. Thank you, Jay. Let us um, pray. Loving and gracious God, you have blessed us with the gift and care of children. Thank you for the calm strength and patient wisdom of the teachers of Emmanuel Parish. Bless them as they guide all those under the care so that the children will love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Jesus, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now is the time for us to return to God our thanks for all that we have been given in offering. And um, there are ways to donate, including online giving. Um, so we commend that practice, spiritual practice to you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. Upon the mountain, my Lord spoke. Out his mouth came fire and smoke. All around me looked so fine. Ask my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Choose the body, not the soul. Ain't but one train on this track. Runs to heaven and right back. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray.
giver of every good gift, lead us to share as we have received abundantly and joyfully. Bless our gifts for the mission and ministry of Emmanuel Church. Nourish us, your people, to proclaim the reconciling work of God in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. We long for the day when we may once again partake of the bread of life, the body of your son, Jesus Christ. As grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one loaf, so gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your son. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God ruler of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine. We long for the day when you will once again refresh us with the cup of salvation in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You have blessed the earth to bring forth food to satisfy our hunger. Let this food strengthen us in the Eucharistic fast that is before us. That following our Savior in the way of the cross, we may come to the joy of his resurrection. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of all creation, we gather on this first day of the week, made holy by the resurrection of Christ, your son. In the waters of baptism, we were buried with him so that we might also rise with him and so share his victory over sin and death. You have transformed our lives into the living stones that form your church with Christ as the foundation stone. Strengthen our community's bond of communion and peace and deepen our solidarity with your church throughout the world. Rekindle with us this Sabbath day, the vision of your kingdom so that our daily concerns and labor may find their proper perspective. Fill our homes with the spirit of the gospel and give us the grace to see the face of Christ in the people with whom we live. We raise our voices in praise and thanksgiving to you, O God, that we who have celebrated Christ's resurrection this day share in his eternal glory, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, who enlightened the minds of the disciples by pouring out this into them the Holy Spirit, make you rich with his blessing, that you may abound more and more in that spirit forever. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit as a flame of fire that rested upon the heads of the disciples, burn out all evil from your hearts and make them shine with the pure light of his presence. Amen. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to him in word and deed. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.